All right, so I got this Dana 20 transfer case out of a Ford Bronco. I just rebuilt this unit, put all new Terra Low 315 to 1 gears in here, and I modified the shift rails so that I could get independent axle operation by removing the interlock pins between the two shift rails. And so what I'm going to show you here is that the work that was done on the shift rails is successful in enabling independent operation while still keeping a measure of interlock in between the two, um, the two output shafts so that you can prevent undesirable combinations of gears. For example, one half in high, one half in low, obviously nuking the uh, transfer case. So um, this is the work that I did on the, trans on the uh, shift rails when I ground them. Okay, so now let's see the modified rails um, in low gear. So here's the transfer case is in neutral, the rear slide gears in neutral, front slide gears in neutral. I'm going to put the rear rail in low. So there is rear low. Everything's working as expected. And then the front in low. There's front low. So here's your typical four low scenario. Now the interlock modifications or the modifications to the rails continue to function for the rear rail while in low, meaning I cannot put this rear gear up into the high speed on, on the, uh, the rear output shaft because the interlock continues to work as expected. Okay? Now you would expect the same with the front. However, the, ol the only undesirable scenario with this modification is that there's no way to prevent the front. Um, when the rear is in low, there's no way to prevent the front slide gear from traveling all the way up and engaging the high gear. And that would be this combination here. Here it is back in neutral. There it is in high. So right now I've just put the transfer case in a really bad state. I have the rear shift rail all the way in right here and it's engaging low gear. And then I have the front shift rail all the way out which is engaging high gear. So this transfer case as I spin it, the rear output shaft is spinning in low, front output shaft is spinning in high. Very bad situation, right? Um, You'll notice that the shift rails, when it's in this combination, are at an extreme opposite position. The rear rail's all the way in, the front rail's all the way out. These shift rails should, should never see this, this level of combination. They should always only be centered or one step apart. In this case, they're two steps apart. Rear all the way in, front all the way out. So, this is the approach that I came up with to solve this problem. I made this little bracket here. Um, which is nothing more than just an eighth inch piece of steel. And it's going to sit in between the shift rails where um, on the J transfer cases where the original um, shift flag is located. Uh, it's going to sit in the, in the rails and you'll notice that the, the holes that, are, that have been drilled here are actually oblonged which allow the rails to continue to travel without binding in the center position. So the way I kind of came up with this is I, I just took a, a digital caliper and I measured the maximum, I'm sorry, the minimum distance while the two rails are at the, their closest point. And then I measured the maximum distance when the two rails are, um, are one step apart, which would be in this scenario, by simply measuring the maximum distance. And that would correspond to the measurements on this, uh, on this bracket that I fabricated. So the way that I plan to solve this is simply inserting this bracket. Um, the shift linkages that I use uh, actually mount from the from the top of the case, which the case is upside down right now, but actually mount from the top of the case so they look a lot like this, so they don't interfere with this this bracket. And basically that's the way that this bracket's gonna look when it's uh, when it's mounted in here. And, and what it does is it still still allows the rails to travel as expected. As you can see I can still get the same pitching motion, but it will prevent that that very extreme combination of the rear rail all the way in and the front rail all the way out due to limiting the amount of travel that the front rail can move. And so this is what that combination looks like as I walk through the shift sequence. The transfer case is in neutral. I have the uh, fabricated bracket here in place between the, the shift rails. And I'm going to go ahead and walk through the different sequences showing that the, the uh, fabricated piece here continues to allow proper operation but um, will prevent the uh, extreme undesirable combination on the shift rails. So here we are in, let's go uh, rear output shaft into high, which is where you'll spend, you know, the majority of your time for a street driven rig. There's rear high, and then of course the front can travel into high as well. You notice that the bracket 
The bracket is not preventing any, any, uh, any combination on the shift rail here. We'll go into front high, which is that combination there. Now we have the front and the rear, both on the high gear, okay? Um, we still get independent operation. I can dis disengage the rear there. As you can see, I have front high, rear's in neutral. Not real sure what, why you'd want that combination, maybe a broken drive shaft and you need to limp home. Nevertheless, front high, rear neutral, okay? And go back into rear high. And of course, the front can go into neutral. We just saw that combination, okay? All right, now let's go into low and look at that. So here's the rear and low. Obviously, the front's in neutral. The, the uh, bracket here is, is not preventing any motion, okay? And then the front and low, which is there. Rear's in low, front and low. Flag is still in between here, okay? Now, let's see if we can move the front rail all the way up into front high like we were before. As you can see, that's the extent of how far I can move it. The travel is limited by this bracket, and you can see that that's as far as it will let it, will let it go there. So as you can see, we accomplished what we set out to, to accomplish here, which is limiting the travel on the front, preventing the front from going all the way into high. And just to make sure we still have all of our proper operation, let me do a front dig. Oops, I don't have the poppet balls in here, so it's easy for it to travel out of place. I'll just hold this in place. Here's the, the rear's been disengaged. As you can see, I still get front low, rear neutral, that would be a front dig. And then here's the rear back in low. So, it looks like this is gonna work as, as designed. And uh, once again, if anybody wants to, to do this modification themselves, it's nothing more than just an eighth inch piece of steel. It's got two holes that are all belonged in order to allow these bolts enough room to travel on this shaft so that you can you can go both in between the two shift rails and end up with a combination like that